Did, you, 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 have you heard that before? That information before? You haven't. The Reverend Al Sharpton didn't tell you that. You, you didn't see that. You know, Jesse Jackson didn't tell you that. Something like that. You know, uh, Michael Eric Dyson. None of them told you that information. Go ahead, brother. What's your name again? Uh, Earl. Earl. Go ahead, brother. Okay, I. I got a different information on that. On what? Uh, on the first, uh, first uh, people over uh -huh. in America. Uh -huh. I got it from uh, the movies. Uh -huh. And it came up from uh, the Nile. And it was shipped. It was shipped. What period of time? Uh, 12,000 years. Uh -huh. yeah. And if you go to uh, American Natural History uh, Museum in New York and hit on Old Man, Mm -hmm. of yeah. They yeah. were here in America it's about 6,000 years ago. Yeah, they were, were the new. Yeah, not saying that that didn't happen. That's that's accurate. But there were Africans here before that. Yeah, that's why I'm saying that's why I'm not going there. So oh, okay, yeah. Now, the old man. Yeah, yeah, there are Africans here before that. And uh, on my show, I interviewed, my, I, 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 I interviewed him a second time, July 12th, just a couple weeks ago. And I read some of his book. Uh, his book is available also on Kindle. Okay, um, it's ten dollars. You can go to Amazon.com and download it. Uh, if you don't have a Kindle, you can download the Kindle software for your laptop, and you can read it right online. It's ten bucks. Uh, I have the Kindle version because it's faster. But I told him I got to order the actual version because he has 713 footnotes in there. He cites all his sources. He breaks that information down. And I've talked to other scholars that know this brother, and they said he knows his stuff. When I just interviewed Professor Joseph Ben Levy uh, Thursday, this past Thursday, uh, Professor Joseph Ben Levy is a professor of ancient civilizations at Northeastern Illinois University. Dr. Jacob Carruthers was his teacher, and he is the associate director of the Comedic Institute of Chicago. Man, he said, he said, that's a bad brother. He said, that brother knows his stuff. Um, yes. The, the, some additional um, resources for that were uh, like Ancient America, a guy named Frank Joseph. Uh -huh. He uh, is an archaeologist and mm -hmm. he publishes uh, papers on other archaeologists who come up with ancient facts and ancient cultures and civilizations that are in America. Mm -hmm. And they uh, give a lot of credence to what he's talking about as far as Africans being in America, right. the Americas, Going for several point. thousand years right. prior to anybody ever being over here. Another exactly. guy's David uh, Michael Cremo okay. has a book called Forbidden Archaeology, mm -hmm. which has um, like they found skeletons of people with gold chains on, mm -hmm. with bracelets, copper, and things like right. that. These are uh, we, we were masters of metal art, Nubia, Egyptians, and things right. like that. We were and of he, he talks about how they take those artifacts and throw them in the basement of the Smithsonian and the, uh, the these museums because it goes against everything that they teach in school. Exactly, exactly. See, there's a lot of information that is hidden because it contradicts what they've been saying for years, okay? So when it contradicts what they've been saying for years, see, they can't come out in oftentimes like that. They can't come out and tell the truth, so they have to hide it. In the documentary Hidden Colors, uh, Dr. Phil Valentine talks about how underneath the Vatican, there's between six to eight miles of uh, artifacts that document our ancient history. Okay, right. Yeah. And I plug this in to my computer does. Oh, yeah. So there's a lot of see. We have to understand that those in power know the truth. And I'm going to get into European white supremacy and what racism is. I'm going to deal with some historical definitions of break down the history of that because before we can even get before we can even deal with the images. We have to deal with what we had, and we have to deal with the origin of the European white supremacy also. But he talks about, but Dr. David Emelchak talks about how the Omex, with, with, uh, um, what's your name again? Earl. Oh, that's what I thought, Earl, okay. I was thinking Earl Flynn, but that's what I thought, Earl. I said, no, I don't call him, not Earl. Okay, that, 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 okay that's what I thought. Uh, the Omex were actually from ancient Egypt, okay? These were the Mendi or the Mandinka. He talks about the yeah, they, yeah, yeah, the poor Egypt, yeah, but they're the, they're the cousins, yeah. They, they, come, they, come, they come from there. And uh, he, break, he breaks all that down in his book, okay? Dr. Ivan Van Sertima talks about this also. That's, that's what he was mentioning in there. 
uh, about 36 years ago, Dr. Ivan Van Sertima, who's another one of our great scholars, who's an ancestor now, he wrote the landmark book, They Came Before Columbus, okay? And Dr. Dr. David M. Otep says that he stands on Dr. Ivan Van Sertima's shoulders, okay? All right, now, um, the article that he, that he mentioned in there, this article here, this is from the New York Times, February 15th, 2010. On Crete, C-R-E-T, and I'm going to pass this around for you. On Crete, new evidence of very ancient mariners. Okay, now this came out two years ago. I just found I just found out about this particular article when I watched that clip in preparation for my second interview with Dr. David Emhotel. I, I haven't heard this on any talk show, anything like this. I haven't seen this really on Facebook a lot, things like that. So this is the type of information. Now, Europeans know this because they published it. This is... This is on the New York Times website. It's still there now. You can download it. I downloaded this July 12th, 2012. Okay? But this has been there for two years. So what else is, what else is there that they aren't telling us? Okay? But uh, this is written by John Noble Wilford. And I'm just going to give you a brief synopsis so you can take a look at this. It says, um, stone tools found uh, there by archaeologists in, in, in Crete are at least 130,000 years old, which is considered strong evidence for the earliest known seafaring in the Mediterranean and calls for rethinking the maritime capabilities of pre-human cultures. This is what he was talking about in the article. The oldest established early marine travel anywhere was the sea crossing migration of anatomically modern homo sapiens to Australia, beginning about 60,000 years ago. These were Africans also. It's interesting how certain things they say in here, but they don't tell you they were Africans. Mm -hmm. But that's all it was at that time. Mm -hmm. Okay, but if you don't know this, you think they're talking about somebody else. You think they're talking about Aborigines, things like that. Something, no, talking about African people. Like I said, a lot of this stuff is hidden in plain sight. We, we have to become history detectives and understand how to decode these things. Jay-Z talks about, you know, Jay-Z decoding, hip-hop decoding. We need to understand how to decode history, all right? It also says, mm -hmm. um, Crete has been an island for more than five million years. Okay, now Crete, let me see if we can see it here. Crete, uh, it's too light. You can't see it. Crete is one of the largest Greek islands, if not the largest Greek island. And Crete is uh, right above, it's right above Africa to the Mediterranean Sea. It's right, I can't see it. You got Sicily here. I think it's right in here. I can't really see it. It's kind of like, but right in that area. If you go look at a map, okay, and this is one of the things that we have to invest in for our youth. Globes, mm -hmm. encyclopedias, dictionaries, things like that. A lot of this information, if you go to those sources like that, almanacs, you'll see a lot of this stuff, okay? But they say uh, Crete has been an island for more than five million years, meaning that tool makers must have arrived by boat, because they ain't swim, okay? So they had to arrive by boat. So this seems to push the history of Mediterranean voyaging back more than 100,000 years Specialists in Stone Age archaeology say this causes, causes them to have to rethink a whole lot of this stuff. But I wonder how long it's going to take them to rewrite the school books that our youth that our youth read. Okay, because this is two years ago, and I don't think they're rewriting the school books yet. Okay, previous artifact discoveries have shown people reaching Cyprus, which is another which is another island in that area. Uh, previous artifact discoveries have shown people reaching Cyprus a few other Greek islands, and possibly Sardinia, no earlier than 10,000 or 12,000 years ago. So we're talking about Africans being in that area 100,000 years before that. And once again, see, nowhere in this article do they want to say that Africans were the only people on the planet at this time. They don't want to say that, but, that, that, but that's the truth. And also, this is what you do. I'm going to give you some homework assignments here, all right? And these are good, these are good, I talked about this on my show Thursday, uh, these are good summertime projects, or anytime projects, but especially summertime, pro summertime projects for the youth to do. Because my mother's a teacher, she's been teaching, she's going into her either 47th or 48th school year. Uh, in the Trek Public School. I don't know how she does. But during the, during the two, and a half, two, two and a half months that kids are out of school, you know this, they forget a lot what they learn before the summer break. We're dealing with this antiquated educational system goes back to when we were dealing with an agricultural basis and the kids were let out of school to work in the fields. Okay. 
for two and a half months to, to do the harvest, things like that. Um, but when they go back to school, a lot of teachers, a lot of teachers have to spend about a month trying to get these kids caught back up to the point that they were before they went on summer break. Okay, so this is a good, a fun project for them to, for them to do. Uh, how many people are familiar with uh, the Greek island of Sardinia? Sardinia. S A R D I N I A. Yeah, yeah, in that area. Yeah, yeah. What, what about uh, what about um, Corsica? Corsica. Okay, this is something. This is something you could do if you go back and listen to the. Uh, I just interviewed Renoko Rashidi. Um, couple Thursday before last. What was that? July. Uh, I can't remember. 19th, July 19th, we talked about his new book, Black Star, The African Presence in Early Europe. Okay, you can take a look at this up here. He has pictures of the flag of Sardinia and the flag of Corsica that is flown on these islands today. And they have the head of African Moors on them. Okay, these Europeans have the head of African people on their national flag. Okay, and it's, it's because the Moors were in this area and they were conquered. So at one point, they would show the Moors the, the Moors' head with a blindfold on, blindfold on, meaning that they were captured. Recently, they took the blindfold off and put it as a band over the head, like a headband. It's like what you see. Actually, this is what it is right here, right here with the headband. That's a Moor right there. Okay, these are African people, um, and, and what they're doing is showing what a formidable foe the Moors were. Okay, to conquer. But and also what I did, the researcher that I am, I Googled and found the official website for Sardinia. And on the official website, they have what's called the coat of arms. And on this coat of arms, they have four more heads right on there, right on their official website that talks about all the tourist attractions in Sardinia, things like that. If you don't know, and I, I wish I had internet, I would, I would show it to you. Uh, maybe during a break when we get up. But if you if, if you Google it, you'll find it. It's like uh, Sardinia Turismo 2012, something like that. Um, but in the upper right hand corner of the page, on every page you go to on that website, this is just a little icon. It looks like decoration. Okay. If you don't know what it is, it'll just pass you by. But that is the coat of arms, and it has four heads of African people on it. All right, so that deals, that's, that's documenting an African presence in that area. And in this book also, uh, let me see. And actually, I'll pass this around for you take a look. Mm -hmm. In this book, um, The African Presence of Early Europe, uh, Renoko shows those pictures, actually right here. Let's see if you can get this on the camera. This is on page uh, 91. Flag of Sardinia, Italy, with four Moors heads on it. And this is, this is right on there. Uh, when you go to their website, this is right on the coat of arms, okay? That's page uh, 91. Also, just a note, when you listen to that interview I did with them, we also talk about, now, how many have read about the Moors at all? Now, when I say the Moors, I don't, I don't necessarily mean the guys you see walking around with fezzes on today. Those are Moors also. I'm talking about ancient Moors, okay? How many knew that the Moors were in Prague, the Czech Republic? Okay. This is a statue in Prague, 17th century, a statue of a Moor in chains in Prague, Czech Republic. Uh, Renoko has traveled to 100, 101 countries, and he takes pictures everywhere he goes and documents the African presence. Okay, but that's that's a picture of the statue right there. This is on page 92. So you can take a look at this. Just please make sure I get this back. This is my autographed pop copy from Renoko Rashid to me personally. Okay, <laughs> so check out page 91 in uh, page 92, all right? Let's take a look at that. All right. And, and what I try to explain to people is that, you know, we have so much actual history, we don't have to spend time making stuff up. Okay, we don't have to deal with fairy tales and things like that, you know. Myths have their place, but we have to understand the difference between myth and history, okay? But we, we don't have to we don't have, uh, waste time making things up and things like that. And if you listen to any, was anybody here for my presentation uh, dealing with the Willie Lynch speech? Reclaiming our history, break creative petitions, Willie, Willie Lynch speech, June 23rd? I'll break that down in there. Okay. 